complete installation typically takes less than 30 minutes. The first step of installation is to install your faucet. If your sink already has a hole for the faucet, go ahead and use that one. However, in many cases, we're going to have to drill our own hole. To drill the hole, the first thing we need to do is locate a suitable spot. Make sure the faucet is installed close enough to the sink so that when the unit is turned on, the water sprays into the sink rather than onto the countertop. Go ahead and use a marker to mark the spot that you want to drill the hole. Locate your drill and insert a 1 and an eighth inch hole saw. Make sure it's a type with a drill bit in the center to stop it from wobbling around and scratching up your countertop. Locate the mark you made and simply drill the hole. Please make sure that the bit you're using is designed for the surface that you're trying to drill through. Once you've created your hole, we're going to go ahead and install the faucet. The next step is to take both of your wastewater lines up through the hole. You should have a 3 8 inch hose as well as a quarter inch hose. We're going to attach both of these wastewater lines to an air gap faucet. This ensures that the drain isn't directly connected to the system in case there's a backup. Go ahead and slide the faceplate on and then the rubber gasket. We can now attach both of the wastewater lines directly to the faucet via the barb fittings that are on the bottom. Once completed, both hoses should be pushed all the way to the top and we can now slide the faucet into place. The first piece we need to install on the bottom side is the mounting plate. The next piece is a plastic spacer. Make sure the open side goes to the top. Then add your washer. The locking washer. And lastly, the nut to hold it all together. We're now going to take the purified water line, which is the blue line, and slide on the compression nut. Next, go ahead and slide on the plastic washer. Not all systems come with one, but if you have a little plastic or brass insert, go ahead and slide it inside of the tube. And then simply screw on to the bottom of your faucet. When you're done, tighten all the nuts down and you now have your faucet and product water line completely installed. Next we're going to drill a 3 8 inch hole in our drain to make a permanent connection for the wastewater. Notice it's a few inches above the trap. This is to ensure the connection is well above the water trap, making it difficult for water to back up through the wastewater line. Once you've attached a saddle valve, it should look something like this. Locate the 3 inch wastewater line and insert it into the push connect fitting. Your drinking water RO system now has a safe, permanent connection to your drain. Next, we're going to hook up a direct connection to your home's water supply. Before you do this, make sure to use the valve to turn off your home's water supply. If you don't have a valve like this, you'll have to locate the water supply to your home and turn that off instead. If you do that, make sure to open up the faucet on your sink and let all the water run out before removing the hose. Go ahead and unscrew the hose and locate your easy faucet connector by Murloc. This is the black piece we're going to use to attach your RO system to the water supply. Also need to find the white washer. Go ahead and insert it into the top and then screw on to your water supply. Once you're finished it should look something like this and you can take the red water supply hose and simply push connect it in. Your drinking water system now has a permanent connection to your home's water supply. Instead of the flexible tubes, your sink may have rigid copper lines. Due to placement, some customers choose to attach it directly to their home's copper piping. To attach directly to copper pipe, we're going to use a self-piercing saddle valve like this one. Locate the seat of the saddle valve, which has two different sizes. Figure out which size is right for you and place it on the pipe. Then slide the rest of the C-clamp on. The unit should now look like this and you should use a wrench to crank down on the nut on the bottom to hold it securely in place. Now that it's properly installed, we'll twist the knob which will drive the pin down into the pipe and make your hole. When you have it all the way to the bottom, we're going to reverse the pin back out so water can flow through the hole. The last step is to attach our red water supply line to the saddle valve. The unit comes with three small parts. The small brass part we're not going to use because that's for a rigid copper line. Go ahead and unscrew the brass nut and then slide it onto the hose. We'll then take the plastic ring and slide it on as well. 
Make sure the thin side of the bevel is closest to the end of the tube. Insert the brass insert and screw onto the saddle valve. You've now made a permanent attachment to your home's water supply. Please note that you have created a permanent hole in your copper pipe and don't install the saddle valve unless you are comfortable with this. The next step is to locate your pressurized tank which will hold and dispense all of your new drinking water. We're going to go ahead and use some plumber's tape on the threads on the top. Once you've applied the tape, you can go ahead and attach your RO tank valve. Having a valve here will allow you to remove the line without water spraying everywhere. Using a hose clip or a sharp knife, go ahead and clip off a few inches of hose. Take that small piece of tubing and insert it into your push connect T. Then insert the other end into your RO tank valve. Now locate the blue line that's coming out of the faucet that we installed and you can push that into the top of the T. Then locate the blue product water line coming out of your RO system and put that into the other end of the T. Your drinking water reverse osmosis system is now going to slowly fill the pressurized tank full of water. This will ensure you have a few gallons of water on hand at all times. When you need it, simply depress the valve on your new faucet and water will travel up the line and into your glass. Notice the valve on the bottom of the canister as well. It looks much like an air valve on a tire. This is used to adjust the amount of air in the pressurized tank. The tank does come pre-pressurized and for the most part you shouldn't need to worry about this. Now that you're finished, the system should look something like this. You may notice that I've clipped some of the lines for aesthetics and to make sure that they don't get caught up on anything. For a typical drinking and reef system, you're going to add the deionization canister. This will further purify the reverse osmosis water and create zero TDS water suitable for aquarium use. Many people choose to not drink deionized water because it's debatably unhealthy and certainly expensive. Because of this, we're going to tee the system off so only the fish tank water will go through the deionization canister. The first thing we're going to do is remove the line between the pressurized tank and the RO system. Push in the ring on the fitting and pull the tube out. We're going to want to go ahead and clip the line in the middle there and then install a T. We're then going to want to cut a small piece of tube, insert it into one end of the T and install a check valve. The check valve will only allow water to flow in one direction. It has an arrow and will flow towards the red clip. Insert another short piece of tube and connect it to the T on the pressurized tank. We install the check valve here because when we want to create reef tank water, we don't want water from the pressurized tank rushing backward through the system and through the deionized resin. This is because the resin performs best with long contact time and slow flows. We can now add a ball valve with a piece of tube to the other end of the T and then use another short piece of tube to connect the ball valve to the deionization canister. The water now passing through the DI resin will create zero TDS water suitable for the aquarium use. You can use a ball valve to turn the tank water off and on. Right now it's in the open position where it would create water. Water will now pass through the deionization resin and out the other end as zero TDS water. When you're not creating tank water, go ahead and turn the valve and turn the deionization portion off. These simple steps will allow you to use your RODI system for both aquarium and drinking water. You will need to occasionally change out the filters on your system. The first filter is a sediment filter. This is going to remove most of the large particles from your water. This helps ensure that the carbon blocks don't get prematurely clogged and should be changed when it's visually brown. The other two are carbon blocks and will remove things like chlorine and volatile organics. They should be changed every 6 to 12 months depending on use. If your household consumes a lot of water, change them every 6 months. The smaller filter on the top is also a carbon block. It's used to remove taste and odors from your system and should be changed when the other carbon blocks are changed. The filter in the larger canister on top is a reverse osmosis membrane and typically lasts around 3 years. And you should change the deionization resin when you notice it change from blue to brown or when you notice that it's no longer producing zero TDS water. 